Yo, if you ask me, planet Earth ain't nothing like it used to be. On this episode, I'm gonna teach people with green how to go green. And you know I enjoy green. We're gonna talk about glamping. I know you're saying, two chains. What the hell is glamping? And I'm saying, hell, I don't know. They had to tell me. Hold on, man. Tent. This shit look like some get out <laughs> shit, though. And kids, don't forget your greens. I mean, your vegetables. Are the kids getting kicked back? And if you've had too many vegetables, like you bought the OD, you can always go to the cure. You should play a part in the two chains. And this is the most expensive. Yo, what up, what up? It's your player partner, 2 Chains, checking in with the veggie man himself, my partner, Joseph. Thanks for having me on the show. How you doing, man? So tell the people out there a little bit about yourself and what you have going on. What we'll be serving tonight is food from my restaurant, PYT. And it's a vegetable-focused restaurant. I started working with a nonprofit charter school. Part of the curriculum was for the kids to be able to be a part of the growing process. What didn't go to the cafeteria, the restaurants would buy. And so they would also learn the economics of it. Right. That they had a hand in growing it and eating it and making money from it. So you're working with a lot of kind of challenging factors because it also gets back to like, having less of a carbon footprint. I just I just feel like this is a next level way of thinking as far as growing your own food. It involves the kids, which involves the future, yeah, which, is a, which is a really dope recipe for really growing anything successful, in my, my opinion. PYT, is it an acronym? Does it mean anything? I know what my PYT means. Well, I mean, mean, it was inspired by the Michael Jackson song. OK. All of us but, Michael Jackson fans. But it also means uh, it could be pretty young turnip or oh, pretty, pretty yellow tomato. Or or yeah. Like so is it tomato or tomato? It depends where you're at. Okay. So tell me about your restaurants. I opened my first restaurant about six years ago, Baco Mercat. And my second one was Barmaz. So that's the Tex-Mex. And then Orson Winston, that's Italian Japanese. And then a year and a half ago, I opened PYT, which kind of pulled all the restaurants, vegetable focused together. And, and they're all at 4th and Main Street in downtown LA. What makes you such an expert on so many different flavors? My family loved everybody. So I have, a, I have a mix. I'm Mexican, Spanish, German, French, English, Irish, Apache. Everything is up black. But you do have black in you because you know how to hustle. Every day. You got 19 restaurants in the same block going against each other and all the money running right back to you. You know what we call that in Atlanta? Trapping. <laughs> Congratulations, bro. Thank you. You're doing something right. What's this? Looks we like got some, some black truffle. I thought that was truffle. truffle. Yeah, you're... I got truffle last time. Big old truffle. Somebody stole my truffle. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so this is my chef, Franco. This hey, is... Franco, how you doing? These are completely vegan, vegan, except for the last dish, which has some dairy. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not vegan. I do eat healthy, though. I do eat healthy, but, but I, don't, I don't eat beef or pork. But I'm not quite vegan. I'm somewhere in the middle. But I do like to try different foods. I think I'm a tester for a lot of delicacies around the world. I always keep my pinky up. They know I'm good <laughs> for the etiquette side of things. Wow. So this is our chef salad that was inspired by the kids. Wow. What's this? Well, this is the turnip. And this has French Perigord black truffles sliced in between the layers. I wanted a dish that was going to have the same gusto as meat, but was all vegetable. I took a classic technique of salt baking. It really intensifies the flavor. And what we've done, there's about 20 grams of... 20 grams? You got some... What you got in there? The 20 grams of truffle, which are about $100 a gram. Yeah? Yeah. They can range anywhere from 800 a pound to... 12, 1500 a pound, depending. You almost got an ounce worth of pretty young truffle. Yeah. <laughs> pretty young truffle in there. There you go. How much would this salad cost? Okay, I gave you about 10 grams. Oh, that you weighing just, up? Th this was just $100 right here. What, what do you mean $100? This, if you eat the whole thing, that's like close to 30 grams. That's like $300. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you really a trap man. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, listen man. Why? Uh 
because truffles are extremely expensive. I know, but why? And, and the blood, sweat, and tears that the kids have to put in. Uh, so the kids getting some of this money, this kickback? Are, are the kids? Oh, yeah, anything we buy from Excuse the school. Excuse me? Let me get be from... clear. Are the kids getting a kickback? Like, you know how the NCAA don't pay the kids to play sports? Are the kids getting kickback? Yes. Is this caviar? This is tonberry, and it tastes kind of like quinoa, but we serve it at the restaurant with the turnip, but we also offer it as a vegan caviar option. This you can only get from Japan. So essentially, the person eating is paying for flights. You yeah, pay. I mean, the, the Paragord only comes from this southwest region in France, which is why it's so expensive and so... It's the travel cost. Yeah, the travel and just the, the rarity, because these are all grown wild. This? They used to use pigs to hunt for them because they would have to smell them, but now they use dogs. Truffle grows on the ground? Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. I teach y'all some. I teach them some every episode. The tonberry will do like $30 for 10 grams. Ah, I'm from the streets, right? When I hear grams, I think about the trap. You know, I just, I'm just street. When I think about grams, are you weighing the stuff up? Yes, we have to, because it is so expensive. When I'm running around, <laughs> when I'm running around with my digital skill, I need to know if this is really an ounce. And do you have deals? Drug sure. dealers have deals. What we'll do is we'll just gift. Like, if you came in, we would just go super heavy. Etched on a truffle. Yeah. Buying food by the gram, you know? Right here, most expensive is bring your scale. Anytime I see gold, it's a price hike. They're going to know whether you want the nurse to come in plain clothes or dress as a nurse. Oh. <laughs> Now, what you got coming up now? What you got? That looks nice. Box that up, honey. OK. I'm eating in one minute. So this is our hand-torn pasta. It's an egg noodle. And we make a sauce out of poblano chilies. It's not spicy, with sorrel and arugula. This gets like 20 grams. How many grams is, is each slice? Can you tell? That's not a gram. It's just. Probably three slices of gram. No, it's probably. This is about, this is like 20 grams. Of, of, of truffle that you yeah. just put on there? I used to be able to eyeball it. I used to see it and tell you how many grams. I can't, I can't tell with the truffle yet. It's gonna take me a minute. Bring your scale. This is our signature cocktail. Mm -hmm. This is the night vision. We serve it with gold leaf, ginger, lemon, and a monkey 47 gin. It's the most expensive on monkey. the market. Monkey 27. Monkey 47. Oh. It's the most expensive monkey. on the market. And it's because it's from Germany, and all the ingredients are from the Black Forest. So 47 different botanical ingredients make this gin, and it's $50 for 375 milliliters. Monkey 27. Monkey 47. I've done enough of these episodes to know anytime I see gold, it's a price hike. So this is like a $55. This right here cocktail. is $55. Yeah. It's fresh juice carrot, fresh lemon juice, and fresh ginger. I ain't bad. It's in there. Alcohol in there. And we top it off with a little bit of champagne. And that's gluten free too, huh? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's delicious. How much is that plate? Two hundred dollars. But for... if you keep mm -hmm. shaving, it could go up to three. Damn. But don't be afraid. Like this is only mm -hmm. if you go. This is. This, this is only place? if you go black truffle. Mmm. I can um definitely salute you and say that this stuff is delicious. Trouble from France and some stuff from Japan. Basically. And all the vegetables from California. Basically, this plate has a lot of stamps on this passport. The most expensive was two chains. Alcohol is nature's greatest gift to mankind. Why? Because it makes you feel good. The ethanol in alcohol releases serotonin, dopamine, and endorphins in your brain. And there's some earth love for your body too. Ethanol kills harmful microbes and provides B vitamins. 
So yeah, go ahead and call your cocktails medicine. I'm not a doctor, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Alcohol is medicine. And this is the most earth-lovey, hippy-dippy alcohol slash medicine drink of them all. It's called Fog Point by Hangar One. Why? Because it's made with San Francisco fog. For those of you who forgot everything you learned in second grade, fog is just condensed water hanging out in the air. Hangar One created mesh nets called quote unquote fog catchers to pull the water droplets out of the air and collect in big tanks. The full tanks of fog water are then taken out to Alameda Island where the water is blended with vodka distilled from California wines. Wow, first they make a big old bridge and now put in fog and booze. My God, what will San Francisco come up with next? The most expensivest vodka deserves the most perfectest martini. And here's how the true baller makes it. Two shots for two chains, just a dash of vermouth, and I don't care what that pasty devil James Bond says, the best vodka martinis are stirred, not shaken. Let's top it off with a dope garnish, and voila, that's how you martini. We coordinate um, airport pickup and drop off. Say you're getting off the plane when Shoot you arrive. You on the way there. There goes nothing. What's up, what's up? How's it going, Mr. Two Chains? I'm Anthony from the Cure IV. And I'm Annie, I'm gonna be your nurse today. Nice to meet both of you guys. What's going on today? I'm gonna be giving you a vitamin IV infusion. Have you ever had one before? Never. So we have all kinds of applications. People call us when they're hungover the morning after, <laughs> and we deliver an IV infusion with an electrolyte blend that replenishes you exactly how you need to be replenished. Yeah. In this bag, we have B12. It helps regulate your sleep pattern, B complex to help stimulate your metabolism. And we also have glutathione, which is a powerful antioxidant. It's really good for like our beauty, we call it. It's good for your skin. It also helps for muscle recovery. Yeah, I went to the gym early. <laughs> yeah. This what? is our actually our vitamins. Oh, they're vitamins? And we have a special one for you, the trap recovery treatment, so. I probably need it. I've been <laughs> trapping all night. From my understanding, you guys can make house calls. We do. We focus on sending the nurse to you. All right. sau khi ghi được bàn thắng thứ hai, anh ta rất tự tin là mình sẽ có cơ hội lập hat-trick. Một trận đấu tốt, bài. Khán giả trên sân vẫn đang cổ vũ rất nhiệt tình. Nhưng đội bóng quân vương của thành phố này vẫn đang gặp quá nhiều vấn đề trong thi đấu. Đúng là như vậy. Có vẻ như họ đã quên mất rằng mình đang thi đấu trên sân nhà thì phải. <cười> 